Unless a miracle happens, we shall be invaded. This factory will be one of their first objectives. I have special instructions here from the Minister of the Interior. In no circumstances must Herr Beaumarsh or his GK armor plating be allowed to pass into Nazi hands. But my work is not yet completed. Yeah, the tests that you have made were good enough to show its possibilities. Isn't that understating it? It is successful to revolutionize defensive warfare. And it is a revolution that we do not wish to have brought about by the Third Reich. Then I am to leave the country. As soon as the Nazi invasion starts, I have your passports for yourself and your daughter. Arrangements have been made for you to carry on your work in another country, where you will be told when the time comes. I have made out lists. German protection, Prague will be bombed. German protection, protection from what? Give me a direct line to the Ministry of the Interior. At once. What? The minister left ten minutes ago for the central radio station. The German command has given the order to march. At this moment, Nazi troops are streaming across our frontiers. In our present defenseless condition, resistance is worse than useless. Citizens of Czechoslovakia, we must bear the trials that lie ahead with fortitude and courage. Be of good heart. And remember, long live Czechoslovakia. Arranged, you will be met at Croydon. Here are the details. Now, you haven't a minute to lose. The plane leaves the airfield in half an hour, and it will be the last. But, uh, but you, Peter? I must say, Axel, your daughter. Is that you, Anna? You have heard? Listen, dear, I don't want to alarm you, but we have to leave the country at once. Go to the airport. I will be waiting for you. Immediately. You understand? Yes, yes, at once. Where are we going? England? Yes, of course. It's perfectly in Anna. Marta, I've got to leave at once. Help me put some things in the bag.
Anna Bomash, you are under arrest. Wait any longer. Please, another moment. My daughter was leaving at once. But the city is occupied already. We must go. <laughs> For laziness, sentence, twelve lashes. My heart will never stand it here, Doctor. Fast fit. I have been under treatment. Thank you, Doctor. Away. Next man. Karl Maaßen, for insubordination. Sentence, twenty lashes. Good for twice the number by the look of him. You will soon learn that it's better to keep your mouth shut than to do as you're told. Thank you. I've no wish to become a Nazi. We shall also teach you that insolence does not pay. With the aid of those pillars of Nazi culture, the whip and the jackboot. Silence! I shall say what I like! You hate the truth. Because in the end it will destroy you and your bankrupt philosophy. You will perish because you have nothing to offer. Because you can't forever replace tolerance and decency with the brutal force. Because you... Stand away from me. Get back to your work. But leave me. No talking. Good Samaritan. I wanted to thank you for yesterday. A swine. Don't look at me. We shall be seen. Why do they send you here? I'm a desperate character. I had a little school on the Sudeten border. I was ordered to abolish our language and to teach in German. And then, illiterate Nazi group leader. So here I am. And you? My father escaped to England. I almost went back with him. Back? I was at school there. They arrested me to find out where he was hiding. And because I couldn't tell them, that's all. England. Well, good luck to him. I've been a fool. I should have held my tongue and, and waited. We shan't always be here. No? Somehow. I'm going to join my father. Oh. Well, we have friends outside. Yes. But between them and us? There must be a way. Past searchlights, machine guns, barbed wire. I should take any risk if I thought I was a chance. But there isn't. 
There isn't one of us who doesn't lie awake. Keep your mouth shut. You know the order. Get fixed, you, I told you. studied with me for a job in the Civil Bureau. He might help us. But isn't he a German? Yes, from the Sudetenland. When it was occupied by Germany, he was desperate. I gave him the advice. Become a good Nazi, Paul. Join the party. And wait. Then you think that... Yes. Now there may be a chance. Be asleep. Carl, what's that noise? That's the Goodman lightship, miss. They should be in England in an hour or two. But it'll be light then. You don't mean we're going ashore without any passports in broad daylight. In broad daylight. Turn it up, what's the idea? Oh, I'm so sorry. Think you're the Mauritania? I might have had a little gish on the I'm end of that. Very sorry indeed. All right, granted me, old cock. Have you caught anything? New eels. Oh. Perhaps it ain't fish you've been out to catch. Not like me, fishing to keep away from the old woman. Where do we change? To the beach. And then London? Yes. There I shall go to see a friend of my family. He fled to England last September. He'll help us. He's living in a place called Hampstead. You've heard of it? Yes. Carl, if you only knew how glad I am to be back here where people can still laugh and be happy. Come away, Alfie. If you're not falling in something, you're threatening in something. Go on. Oh. I should like to see Dr. Fredericks. Have you an appointment? No, but uh, if you would give him my name. It is Marson. Carl Marson. Well, uh, will you come in, please? Thank you. Now, if you will take this to Gildes, the opticians. They are just around the corner. If you mention my name, they will make up your little girl's glasses at a reduced charge. Thank you, Doctor. And don't worry. With care, she will grow out of it. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Good night. There's a gentleman to see you, Doctor, and Mr. Marson. Marson? Oh, very well. Show him in. The Doctor will see you now. Thank you. Good luck. Mr. Marson. Good evening. How do you do, Doctor? I was given your name. I'm suffering from an uh, eye strain and I should like a test. Headaches and so forth? Mm, yes. If you will be good enough to sit in this chair, please. Thank you. Warm this evening, 
Yes, it is. Rather. There appear to be a storm brewing. Now, will you read the top line, please? K, M, S, Q, R, Y. And now the line underneath. M, O, two, six, seven, three, G. I don't think that is quite right. Will you repeat it, please? M, O, two, six, seven, three, G. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Well, I have to report that on instructions from Gestapo headquarters, I successfully made contact with the woman Bormash in concentration camp number four, Reichsprotektorat of Bohemia. I escaped with her as arranged on the 27th of July and came ashore this morning at 11.15 from the freighter Stovendam. We are staying at an apartment house at 124 Paddington Lane, Marylebone. Good. She has, of course, made no attempt to locate her father. No. I'm awaiting your instructions. This is all we know. Bomash is working for the British Admiralty. Well, we have no idea. He is certainly well hidden and well guarded. Therefore, we must move cautiously. Understood, sir. So do not appear too eager. Impress upon her that you are aliens and must move carefully. Suggest that she places an advertisement to this effect in the personal column of the London Times, signed perhaps with some nickname which her father will know at once. You will see that that advertisement is repeated daily until it is answered. When that happens, you will report to me instantly. You understand? Yes, sir. That is all. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. I see that fellow Ribbentrop's going to Moscow. Mm, so did Napoleon. Yes, who is it? Yes, I'm alone. Who is it, please? I can't answer questions. Now, please listen carefully. At the post office in Plain Street, a letter is waiting for you containing a railway ticket. Go to the destination on the ticket, and when you get to the town, ask for a man named Gus Bennett. Have you got the name? Gus Bennett. Yes, but who do I ask? Everyone there knows Gus Bennett. You say nothing of this to anyone. That is most important. Somebody telephoned. We found him. Where? I don't know yet. But uh, what did they say? Carl, I'd love to tell you, but whoever it was said I wasn't to say a word to anyone. Oh. Oh, I don't mean you're just anyone. Of course you're not. And I... I would much rather you didn't tell me. We don't know what your father is doing, and it's probably right he should take precautions. There's no one in the world I'd rather confide in. I don't know what I'd have done if it hadn't been for you. No. You're happy now? Mm-hmm. Well, that's all that matters. Good night, Carl. Oh, 
looking for Mr. Gus Bennett. I was told I'd find him here. Oh, he's a long ear, all right. Can you hear a warbling note like an air raid siren? Well, that's him singing. Over there? He turns out the same moldy songs from nine in the morning. The human barrel organ he is. Lots in life may be denied. But hearts can laugh when love's inside. For only love can lead the way as time rolls on and on. The song of the century. When home sweet home and Nana Laurie have forgotten, the song will live on now, madam. Only the price of a stick of rock. Sixpence, sir, the ballad of the age. Only love can lead the way. Here, buy a copy for the sergeant major. Thank you, gentlemen, thank you. And you nothing to buy a copy of this haunting melody. How's that to be haunted for sixpence, miss? Mr. Gus Dennis. In the flesh. And if you want me to autograph it, I'll throw that in. I'm Anna Beaumash. How do you do? Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to sing again yet. I was told to come and see you, Mr. Bennett. Hmm? Who by? It? I don't know. Is this a gag? Well, somebody phoned me. They said you'd have news of my father. Your father? Never heard of him. Somebody's been putting your leg. Only love can lead the way in tonics so far. We give the tonics, you provide the so far. Thank you, madam. Yeah, don't go away. I'm just going to tear off another number, then we'll have a talk. I'm now going to sing the sentimental song here to the year. They say it's the hand that rocks the cradle, rules the world. But believe me, it's songs like this that fill it. It's true. Oh, what it does to me to know it's true. She loves me. Are you sure it was Gus Bennett they said? Yes, I'm certain. Your father's not in the song business? No. Oh, it's beyond me. How did you lose him? He escaped. Escaped? You mean he's still at large? I mean, you haven't seen him since? No. You see, I was in a concentration camp. Were you really? Where? Near Prague. Prague? Are you here by yourself? Yes. Anyone know you're here? No. Do you like another of these? No, thank you. Elsie? Extended. Extraordinary. Well, there's an answer to this. You don't know my father, you don't know anything about him, and you can't help me. Is that him? resort. But I hardly think that Herr Bomash is there for his help. The United Sacosta Bay is the Dartle Naval Base. The report says he has been there three times in the last week. Well, probably conducting experiments, though. Precisely. We can't afford to delay a moment longer. There is another reason for haste. Any day now, Poland may provoke us into invading her in self-defense. England will not stand by Poland. We have the personal assurance of Herr von Ribbentrop as to that. Mm, so I understand. Nevertheless, instruct Fredericks that we are putting arrangements in hand at once. A very good one. You nonchalantly go around, completely unaware. It's just another ordinary day. You meet a sweep who sweeps you off your feet. The heart skips a beat and runs away. You can't recall a tender thought to show how much you care. You can't think of a single thing to say. You're meek, so meek. You talk, but you don't speak. Your heart skips a beat and runs away. It may be Tuesday or Sunday, Thursday or Monday. No, I've never warned you at all. Is the coffee ready? It won't be a minute. Thank you, dear. Oh, hello. Hello. Come to see Father? No. Want some? Thank you. Where did you get that from? Post office stopped it. Why? I gave them instructions. What have my private letters to do with you? Postmark's a dangerous thing. This letter's to a friend of mine. British? No. Refugee? I'm not going to be cross-examined. I must remind you that the government pay me a wage, small but regular, to look after your father. It's obviously not small enough. You don't suppose I'd write to anybody I couldn't trust? Why, if it wasn't for Carl, I wouldn't be here. What did you say? Well, he escaped with me. But you never told him? I told my father. It's not me. 
If I didn't, it's simply because Carl is an alien without a passport. He was afraid he might be deported. Known him long? No. What are you doing? Just want to check up on him. Have you ever heard of an organized escape? Organized? To lead them to your father. But that's fantastic. Carl doesn't even know where I am. You sure of that? Of course. I told no one. Good. Honestly, I don't want to throw a monkey wrench into the romance. Thank you. I appreciate that you're inspired by the highest motives. And that you'll go to any lengths to pursue them. Any lengths? Even to exhibiting yourself in public as a singer. Well, nature endowed me with a gift and I just accepted it, that's all. It's a pity it didn't endow you with a voice. Nothing that happened to me in that concentration camp was quite as dreadful as listening to you day after day singing those appalling songs. With those few words, you've knocked the bottom out of my entire existence. Pity I only knocked it. Mr. Burmash, will buy it? Yes, he is. Admiral Baldwin sends his compliments. He'd like Mr. Burmash to have dinner with him this evening. And his daughter. Mm, I'll tell him. But just a minute. Didn't Admiral Baldwin leave for the Mediterranean last Tuesday? No. He's aboard the flagship, lying off Dartland. But I understood that... Isn't he going too far out for Dartland? I say, Charles, the wife's just phoned. I understand you're coming over to tea on Sunday. Yes, I believe. Well, she wants you to remind Beryl to bring some recipe for pickling walnuts or something. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, hello, Randall. How are you? Hello. Hi. Just discussing the Beaumarsh affair. Oh, yes, you slipped up rather badly, there, didn't you? Yes, I think. Well, it wasn't exactly his fault. We ought to have known about Carl Marson. No, the war office have been stinking about him. They take the view that this armor plating of bow meshes will make all the difference to the next war. Probably nothing of the sort, but well, there you are. And by tonight, bow mesh will be in Berlin, and well, they won't lose any time before putting the screws on the poor devil. Tomorrow night? That means he won't be at the Admiralty until, let's see, Saturday morning. That's about it. Why? 24, nearly 48 hours. Why, what are you driving at? Well, they got him out of England. Why shouldn't I get him back? But that's quite impossible. Why? I know my way about. I was three years in Berlin. Drinking lager. Mm. Vodka now, isn't it? What about the Polish situation? Germany may march at any moment. You know what that means. I should be back before then. Well, sir? Well, you know perfectly well I can't give you permission to do it. And the fact that you make the request at all shows you're not yourself. Don't you think so, Gaskin? Oh, well, I... I quite agree with you. Now, I suggest you take a week's sick leave to enable you to get a complete change of air. Hmm? Thank you, sir. I understand. I think it might be very good for both of us. Mm -hmm. Now, I expect you'd like to have a little chat about it. Yes, I would, sir. Uh, well, uh, Charles, you won't forget about that recipe, will you? No, no, I'll remember. Now, look here. I don't know what your plans are, but I expect you want a few letters of introduction. Mm -hmm.
Reichssender Königs Wusterhausen calling. Early this morning, the Polish hordes attacked Germany. The Führer immediately gave orders to our glorious army to invade Poland and to destroy these intolerable aggressors of peace-loving Germany. Nephil High Command, Herr Mayor. Have to reach it. I'll ring you tonight. I'll be waiting. Good luck. All identity cards. All identity cards. All identity cards to be shown. All identity cards. All identity cards to be shown. Identity card? Come on, come on, come on. I've worked here for ten years. You guessed up as well as must want a job. All right. All this right. is a fine country to live in. Hey. What's that? Nothing. Name. Department. Schwab. Records. Intelligence. Report that man. Excellent officer. While we have men like you at home, we have nothing to fear. Nothing. Oh, I have a letter of appointment for Commander Kampfeld. Where can I find him? Second floor, sir. This is a very grave matter. Very grave. It has just been reported to me that you've been heard expressing sentiments hostile to the fatherland. What, to me, sir? What is it? Major Herzog to see you. He asked me to give you this. Can't you see I'm engaged? I warn you, Schwab, such treasonable conduct will lead you to a concentration camp. But, sir, what did I say? You were distinctly heard to remark, this is a fine country to live in. Oh, no, sir. There's some mistake. No, what I said was, this is a fine country to live in. Huh? You sure? Yes, sir. Hmm. I see. Well, in future, don't make remarks that can be taken two ways. Much wiser not to talk politics at all. Yes, sir. You may go. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. This is a fine country to live in. This is a fine country to live in. This is a bloody awful country to live in. Shall I show Major Herzog this, sir? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Me. Major Herzog. Hi, Hitler. Hi, Hitler. Sit down, Major. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting. This is to introduce to you Major Ulrich Herzog of the Corps of Engineers. Major Herzog is in Berlin on an important technical mission for which he requires Admiral T. assistance. I am sure, my dear Kampfeld, that you will give him your best cooperation. Heil Hitler, etc., etc., etc. I wish these war office fellows would learn to write properly. Signature might be anything. Whose is it? Well, I have no idea. As usual, I was taken from one office to another. I suppose it couldn't be Sarfid's. Sarfid. Or did he go in the purge? I can't remember. I believe he did. Mm. Whoever he was, he spoke very highly of you. He did? Might be near pits. Not very likely, though. However, the important thing is, what can I do for you? I want to refer to certain technical evidence given before the Naval Heavy Armaments 1935 Committee. If you will let me have a report of the copy, Commander. Certainly. It will take only a moment. I have my own filing system here. A copy of the Naval Heavy Armaments 1935 Committee's report. Have you been in Berlin long, Major? No. I only left the Siegfried Line last Tuesday. Really? How is it there? Things are pretty hectic, I expect. Pumping night and day. I was there in a consultative capacity. Steel fortifications. You possibly have heard. Oh, yes, yes, Major Herzog, of course. Looks rather like Stuckner. And I believe he is doing diplomatic work in the Balkans. And who is not? I'm afraid we haven't a copy of the 1935 report, sir. What, sir? We had one of 34, but not 35. Are you sure there was a 35 committee? I sat on it myself as I'm a liaison officer. I beg your pardon. Very well, very well. It's these fellows at the top, they forget to send copies on. Perhaps the construction department might be able to help. The very thing. 
They might have one. I'll ring them at once. Oh, I'm sorry. No trouble at all. Commander Prada, I have with me Major Ulrich Herzog of the Corps of Engineers. He is well known for his splendid technical achievements on our west wall, as you're no doubt aware. He will be greatly obliged if you can give him some assistance. You'll see him at once? Thank you, sir. Nineteen thirty-five, you said. I guess I could get hold of a copy for you. Now, Commander Prada, you may be able to help me more directly. You know, I just left the Siegfried line. Mm -hmm. So, Kampel said, how's everything? The crook's armor plating is the trouble. Confidentially, that's why I am in Berlin. Do you realize that the steel used by the Czechs is better than anything we have got? Mm -hmm. So I've heard. But surely now that we control the Haska works... Not enough. We let the only men who counted there slip through our fingers. Bomash. Yes, I knew Axel Bomash personally. He was present at the first gunnery test of his GK plating. Incredible results. And where is he working for Britain? But if we cannot trace this 1935 report... One moment, Major. You will be surprised to hear that Bomash is no longer in England. What? He was brought back to Germany only a few hours ago. In fact, he's in this building now. But this completely alters my plans. Perhaps you could arrange for me to see Herr Bomash at once. I'm afraid it's impossible. He's with the controller. But surely there's no harm in my asking him a few questions. It's beyond my province, Major. I'll pass you on to Captain Wingarden, but frankly, I don't think it'll get you any further. The controller's office is rather like the Kingdom of Heaven, and if anything, a little more exclusive. But you are no longer living in a decadent democracy, ruled by a pack of ranking intellectuals. This is the Third Reich, and the Führer does not tolerate stupid, insolent obstinacy. You have been asked to work for Germany, Herr Bomash. And you will. Can't you leave him alone? You bullied and shouted at him ever since we got here. He's had no sleep. Mr. Green. Can I have another word with them, sir? Yes, you please. Anna, it's useless for your father to resist like this. You must persuade him. You will both be given reasonable freedom. Freedom here? In time, you will see things the way I do, the way everyone in Germany does. I'm not a German. Germany is as much your country as it is ours now. We don't hate the Czechs. We only wish to protect them. As you're protecting the people of Poland? You've been too long in Britain listening to their smug hypocrisy. If I listened to hypocrisy in Britain, it was not from the British. I was doing my duty. As a citizen of the Reich and a subject of the Führer, for whose sacred mission no sacrifice is too great. That sounds rather like something you learnt from a book. For years you had this sort of thing drilled into you until it's all you know or care about. You're a fanatic with a set of stupid fixed ideas. If you hadn't made me hate you more than I thought I could possibly hate anybody, I think I should feel sorry for you. You have expressed yourself very clearly, Fräulein Bromash. You will be placed in a concentration camp until your father comes to his senses. Must you drag my daughter into this? I press with you, Herr Bomash. Hello? What here? Very good. Admiral Hassinger is on his way up. The Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Count Hassinger. Come in, my dear fellow, come in. Well, sir, let me present Major Herzog for the Corps of Engineers. I expect you have heard of him. The man behind the Siegfried line, eh, Herzog? Only one of the men, sir. The Führer is responsible for the lines. He is responsible for everything. Well, what progress? You remember me, Herr Bomash? I did not expect to see you again here. And you, Fräulein Bomash. I see you have not forgotten me. It must be four years. Major Herzog is preparing a highly confidential report on armor plating. He has been on several missions to Prague. He met Bormash there. Just one moment, sir. Marson, conduct Herr Bormash and his daughter into the next room. Mr. Bormash? Maybe we shall meet again. Later. Uh, 
I thought it unwise to speak in front of Beaumarche. So far, we have made no impression on him. I do not agree. He looks ten years older. My orders are to obtain quick results. As a race, we are rather inclined to believe that the knuckle duster is the best diplomatic weapon. Do I understand that you question? I question nothing. I am an army officer. Personally, I do not follow any of this at all. Beaumash is not the man to be bullied in the corporation, sir. Well, what do you suggest? I knew Fräulein Beaumash in Prague. She has a great influence with her father and is the one person who can make him change his mind. Oh, Marston, he has tried there, but she refused to listen. He is largely responsible for tracing Beaumash in England, completely outwitting the British military intelligence. So, may I express a soldier's admiration for one who can carry out his mission under the very eyes of the enemy's secret service? Thank you, sir. But, if I may say so, I hardly think the captain is a suitable person to influence the lady. And who do you think would be more suitable? Why, myself, for instance. You! Why not? Hretschow was very friendly with her in Prague, you know. A little more than friendly. You saw the way she looked at me when I came in. Oh, yes, of course. Seems to me you are a bit of a dog, Hertzog. A technician, Admiral. One does not talk about these things, but I think if I were to spend a few hours alone with her, I might induce her to reason with her father. Oh. What do you think about that, Strasser? I cannot promise, mind you. Four years is a long time. It seems to me it is worth attempting. After all, the business is urgent, Strasser. It is indeed, sir. You really believe that you could influence a girl in a matter of hours? Shall we say, overnight? I see. Knowing Prime Boma, sir, I doubt whether even his qualities will make any impression on her. You are not acquainted with my qualities. Strasser, we let him try it. No harm done if he doesn't succeed. Leave all the arrangements to me. This requires a knowledge of maneuvers. Come along, Herzog. You may be right, my dear. Bennett may be trying to help us. But why have they brought us to this hotel? Providing you with clothes. Doesn't make sense to me. Well, Bennett's behind it, obviously. He's organized the whole thing. Huh. Well, how did he manage to get into the German Admiralty as a Nazi officer? But I don't see how he can get us away from here, Oh, Anna. Father, don't worry about it. Perhaps you'd better go to bed now, eh? We'll find out what it's all about in the morning. Good night. Good night. Good night, my dear. are expecting me, Major Hetzog. Yes, sir. Good evening. Your room is number 18. Your bags have been taken up. My flowers arrived? Yes, sir. The lady has them. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. My darling, you look as charming as ever. Those same sweet lips, like warm carnations. Those sweet, mysterious eyes, darker and softer than the bluest dusk of August violets. The poet has it, and I hope you were there, Ian. No one under the bed, I trust. I'll oh, bring me a bottle of Krug 28. That will be excellent. What's happening? Well, you may have gathered that we were partners in a highly romantic interlude in Prague four years ago. By the way, did you like the flowers? Does that matter? Well, it cost me 12 coupons. Well, go on. Well, tomorrow morning I'm going to phone the Admiral and say that your father is now prepared to work for Germany. What? I should say that I persuaded you to reason with him. They're bound to ask him to take you both along. The Gestapo man downstairs let us pass, and then yes, instead but of... how do you know they will? Well, they're listening to the phone. They always do. Oh. Then instead of driving to the Admiralty, we shall go to a meadow outside Berlin where a plane is waiting. Oh, I see. But why should the Admiralty believe you've persuaded me? I shall indicate that uh, once again you have succumbed to my charms. Once again? It happened in Prague, I'm afraid. And you told them a fantastic story like that? Fantastic? Well, it was four years ago. There was a harvest moon. I was younger and more dashing then. But you really mean all this? It sounds far too simple. I have a very simple mind. But there is one small complication. Uh, I shall have to spend the night here. 
in a purely professional spirit, of course. That is necessary. Well, it sort of fits into the picture. That place is absolutely falling with Gustavo. Have you any sporting instinct? Why? Well, I'll uh, toss you who sleeps on the couch. But you're treating all this as if it was some sort of joke. You don't seem to realize how much depends upon it. Well, there's no good being intense about it. You don't think I like the idea of a firing squad, do you? What? England may be at war with Germany tomorrow. I see. But, and don't you think I ought to tell my father about all this? No. Why not? Well, it's hardly look right for a lovesick girl to go popping back to her dad. That'll get the waiter. If you can pretend that you find me almost unbearably I'll be attractive. So much the better. All right, I'll try. Thank you. My little Anna. Is it uh, raining? Uh, no, miss. Is anything the matter? Uh, that tune you are whistling, sir, it is an English tune, isn't it? How do you know? I heard it on the radio from London last night. Are you not aware that listening to the foreign broadcast is forbidden, that there is a strict penalty? Sorry, sir. I will not report you on this occasion. We'll see that you are more discreet in future. Get out. <sighs> Very awkward. Lucky it wasn't Royal Britannia. I handled it rather neatly, I thought. You know, if a woman ever loved you like you love yourself, it would be one of the romances of history. As I'm unlikely to think of an adequate reply to that, I think we ought to drink a toast. England expects that every Secret Service man this night shall do his duty. Take it here, it looks better. Hello? Is that call for me? It's the German Admiralty. Yes, heads up here. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, heads up, but we have to alter our plans. We have just received instructions from headquarters in Munich. The Beaumarsh is to go there at once by the first train. But this is ridiculous, sir. Couldn't you delay it for a few hours? Impossible. It is on the Führer's orders. And the train leaves in an hour's time. But, sir, what is the use of sending Herr Bormesch to headquarters in his present frame of mind? What do you suppose the Führer's frame of mind would be if we didn't? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What's happening? They're sending you to Munich at once. There's only one chance. What? Leave the hotel. Scuttle, an old German custom. But the guard's downstairs. We got into the Admiralty. We get out of here. Get your clothes on. I'll tell your father we leave here in five minutes. I've been instructed to leave immediately with Herr Bomisch. I shall not require you. Dismiss. Uh, shall I get you a taxi, sir? I call one myself. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm here to escort Herr Bomisch and Fräulein Bomisch to Munich. The controller phoned me ten minutes ago. I was about to drive them to the Admiralty myself. My orders are to take them straight to the station. The train leaves in 50 minutes. Evidently a misunderstanding on my part. Very well, we are ready. You, sir? Certainly. Well, you're not told. I have the Admiral's authority to travel with them. He feels it essential that Herr Beaumont should be persuaded to comply with our wishes before he reaches headquarters. I was progressing extremely well with Fräulein Beaumont when this happened. I see. Very good, sir. Copy of this week's punch. Please? Punch. English magazine. Very humorous. You must have a copy. No. She hasn't got a punch, old man. Hasn't she? No. Oh. Sold out, I suppose. You will all leave here and find places elsewhere. This compartment is commandeered by the police. Come along, no delay, please. They've got La Vie Parisienne, boy. La Vie Parisienne? All right, don't bother about a punch. Oh. 
Everyone's hopped it. Yeah, well, must have got in the wrong train, I expect. We can have a side each to ourselves now. Put our feet up. Bought a copy of Mein Kampf. Occurred to me it might shed a spot of light on all this. How do you do? Never read it. Never had the time. I understand they give a copy to all the bridal couples over here. Why well, don't think it's that sort of book, old man? This is the compa. Why are you still here? Eh? You must find other places at once. We have first class tickets, you know. Outside, please, this compartment has been commandeered by the authorities. That is beside the point. Yes, we're British subjects. Yes. Look here. We, Edward Frederick Lindley, Viscount Halifax, His Majesty's Principal Secretary of State, etc., request all whom it may concern to allow the bearer to pass without let or hindrance and to afford him or her... Outside! Good argument, I suppose. Apparently not. Waste of time, all this bilge in the passport. Outside, come along, hurry! All right. Excuse me. Now, don't forget that you're terribly attracted to me. The two guards' compartment is in there, sir. All right. Thank you. Would you like to face the engine? Whatever you like. Did you notice that German officer who came into our compartment? Yes, why? Well, I could have sworn it was old Dickie Randall. Dickie Randall? Yes, we were at Balliol together. You must have heard me talking about him. He used to bowl slow leg breaks. Played for the gentleman once. Caught and bowled for a duck, I remember. Oh, yes, Dickie Randall. But if he's a German officer, how can he be Dickie Randall? Well, I knew him quite well. His rooms were next to mine. Why on earth? You don't think he's working for the Nazis, like that fellow, what's his name? Traitor? Hardly, old man. He played for the gentleman. Only once. Last Easter, I was looking in a shop window in the Graben and I saw the reflection of a girl. For a moment, I thought it was you. Were you by yourself? Yes. Why? I just wondered. <laughs> the blackout. You know what it means so far west as this? England and France have declared war. Nothing to fear. The nation is behind the Führer. Yes, but how far behind? We're stopping. Everybody out at once, please. Everybody, Everybody out, out on the platform. Everybody out on the platform, please. Everybody out at once, please. Why are we stopping here? I don't know yet, sir. Just have the order. Everybody out, please. Everybody out. Everybody out. How far away from Munich? 
Nothing else, Jenny. Number, please, sir. Yes, it's uh, 0735. 0735. Well, I beg your pardon. Aren't you old, Dickie Randall? Major Herzog, Corps of Engineers. Well, I'm frightfully sorry. It's very silly of me, but it's an amazing likeness. Yes, you better come along on them. Extraordinary. English, I presume. Apparently. A very peculiar race. We have a small waiting room, sir. Perhaps you would prefer to wait in there. Thank you. This way, please. Please, please, this way. Everybody off the train there, please. Everybody off the train. You know, you... You made me feel painfully embarrassed, Collicott. Well, I can't help it if old Dickie Randall has a double. You must realize that we're traveling in very difficult times. Hmm. What's the matter? I can't help thinking of your face when he said Major Herzog, Corps of Engineers. <laughs> well, all I can say, Charters, is that when it comes to humor, we live in entirely different worlds. This waiting room is required. Every passenger must wait outside. Come on, won't you two, please? Come on, so quick like possible. This is getting beyond a joke. <laughs> you can't stand for this. Come on, please, out. Everybody out so quick as possible. Everybody must wait outside. All passengers must wait outside. Sure. No good being undignified, old man. No, quite right. Come on. Please, 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 please. Come on, come on. Come on. Please, please, please. Oh, Major. May I form you to notify them of our delay? Of course. My absence may provide the opportunity for Fräulein Bomash to approach her father. It might help. You seem to have made a considerable impression on the Lady Major. I apologize for doubting your capabilities. Stay on guard here. See that no one enters or leaves. Understand? No one. spoke to you. Did you know him? Yes, I did. A fellow called Caldicott. It's probably the first time he's ever left England before the end of the cricket season. Just my luck, he gave me a very nasty moment. No one would have guessed it. I was a member of the Foreign Office Operatic Society. No, I once played pool bar at the Foreign Secretary's Cocoa. Have you thought of any way of getting us out of this? I have. A car will be waiting at Munich to take us to headquarters. We'll be quite a crowd and I shall ask for a second car so that we can be alone. I suppose they don't give it to us. They will, because by that time we shall be on the verge of persuading your father to work for Germany. But you, on the other hand, must be asking for time to think. You get the idea? Yes, but... Then we only have the chauffeur to deal with, and after that, Switzerland. Switzerland? Well, it's hardly a break through the Siegfried line. Yes, but Switzerland's a long way from Munich. If we can bluff them into giving us that car, we'll make it. So from now on, Mr. Burmash, you've got to make up your mind whether to keep your armor plating or let it go rusty. Is that quite clear? I think so. And you're still so crazy about me that you'll sell the armor plating for a very small lock of my hair. You can't sit here. Why not? This truck is required. Come on. Off, 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 off. I suppose these bags aren't required, too. Off, 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 off. Pushed about from pillar to post by this railway ever since we got on the train. Yeah, everything we sit on seems to be required. It's monstrous. We shall write to the company about this. <laughs> We're not at war with England yet, you know. But you are mistaken. France declared war this afternoon, and England declared war this morning. Whoa. Yes. Good heavens. What's the matter? My golf club. 
Where are they? I lent them to Max in Berlin. Like a fool, I said he needn't bring them back till next Wednesday. Probably seen the last of them. Yes. I expect they'll require them for something or other. I read in the paper that they're pulling up the park railings. Well, I don't see the connection, old man. Well, your clubs are steel, aren't they? Yes. Oh, there you are, then. Whip shafts, too. Yes, Specially made for me. Why not get in touch with Max? Oh. On the telephone. Ask him to send them to London immediately. It's a desperate chance, but it's worth taking. I shall never be able to replace them. Oh, a telephone? Hmm? Station master's office. Captain Strasser, Marcel here. I'm speaking from Kurt Baden. Oh, I beg your pardon. It concerns Major Herzog, sir. I think a full inquiry should be made at once in view of something which happened a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago? You mean he's with you? Admiral Hassinger gave him the authority. Hassinger did? He never told me. It was very suspicious. Yes, but the Admiral himself introduced him. I'll ask him. I'll phone you back. Uh, what is your number there? Yes, 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 in a few minutes. Admiral Hassinger, please. Hello. I want a long distance call to Berlin. Oliver 2466. What? Yes. Yes, of course it's important. It's all in German. What? Well, how long then? Oh, all right. Blasted junctions engaged by the military. They'll call me back. These people seem to have no idea of business as usual. If I were asked to give a snap judgment, I should say that was an S. More like an F? I do not know, sir. I used to know someone who made his S's like that. Someone in the war office? Well, no. Oh, we can't afford to waste time. You didn't give him permission to travel with the prisoners, did you, sir? No, no. But he may have assumed it. If you remember, we more or less gave him carte blanche. The only thing is to check up with the war officer. But I suppose so. War office? If he's right. This will be very serious for you, Kampfeld. Very serious indeed. The letter was addressed to you. There's no denying that, Kampfeld. Quite right. I'm afraid I shall have to sack my secretary. Hello? That'll be our call. I bet it's my call. Marson speaking. Yes, sir. Listen, Marson, you are right. We have been completely fooled. Hartsoff is not known at the war office. There is no officer of that name on the army list. Then, uh... Yes, sir, obviously. An enemy agent. I say, Charters, there's a, another phone in there. Ooh. Ooh. Lucky. Hello? 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 Gone dead. Hello? Why not try the thingamate type? Uh, you know, the gadget. Hello? It's the extension. That chap out there. Well, perhaps he'll be off the line in a minute. What's up? They're talking about... What's his name? You know, that's off. No, he doesn't suspect. Yes, sir. I see. All passengers aboard, please. No time to send here now, sir. The train is leaving. What? Listen, we can't afford to take risks. 
Carry on with Hartzoff to Munich. Let him think he's getting away with it, understand? I'll get on to army headquarters there. Very good, sir. What is it? Well, as far as I can make out, Herzog isn't Herzog. What? No, they're sending an escort to arrest him when we get to Munich. Herzog? Yes. What? Well, um, listen, if, if Herzog isn't Herzog... What? Well, he must be Dickie Randall. Yes. Everybody on the train, all passengers aboard, please! After you, Major. All passengers on the last two coaches only. 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 Keep within call. I shall need you at Munich, perhaps before. One thing emerges very clearly from all this. Collicott! The train! Go get it! Oh, right there! That was a near thing. I thought we were going to be in this infernal country for the duration. Oh, my Lord. Don't anticipate, old man. What are you saying just now about something emerging very clearly? I said? Hmm. When? On the platform. About something emerging? Hmm. What was it? What was what? What emerged, you never said. Oh. We do not wish to persuade you to become a National Socialist, Herr Bomish. I have explained that to your daughter, have I not? And you may work wherever you choose, Father. Isn't that so? Quite. After all, we should have our freedom. I know, my dear, but freedom is strangely interpreted in this country. I do not agree with you, Herr Bomash. Freedom in Germany is a great advance on freedom elsewhere. It's properly organized and controlled by the state. I'd much rather we get politics out of it. Bermash, unfortunately, refuses to understand the sacred importance of the Nazi world mission. You stay in England, perhaps. No doubt, a corrupt influence. A corrupt country. Controlled by international Freemasons under Jew Churchill. But since you wish it, Herr Bermash, we will drop politics and discuss it from a more personal basis. I'm certain, Charters, that what you were about to say was that we stumbled on something pretty serious. There's no doubt which side Randall's playing for. Ours? Yeah. Yes, that's what was emerging so clearly. Well, it's up to us to find some way of warning him. Yes, come on, let's find it. That's a colligan. Yes? I think we're wise rushing into this. How do you mean? Well, I mean, we have no proof that Randall's working for England. Well, everything points to it. Yes, but is that enough? We're enemy aliens, and these Nazis are pretty free with their firing party. Hmm. Well, ought we to let that stand in our way? Well, certainly not. I mean, if, if we were certain. As it is, we've just got to bear it in mind. I don't see what else he can be doing. Oh, we know. He may be an international crook. Crooks don't generally play for the gentleman. Raffles did. That's fiction. Still, 
You may be right, Charters. Of course, if we were certain, we'd do our duty and take the risk. Yes, of course. As it is, I can get on with Mein Kampf. I haven't got out of Hitler's boyhood yet. And, Herr Bomesch, what is even more important, your daughter will be able to live with you or wherever she pleases. You must give me time to think. Certainly. We should be in Munich in 40 minutes. Indeed. For the first time, I will be sorry when the journey's over. Yes, I, I can believe that. I think we should order something to eat. An excellent idea. Just in case we do not find headquarters in a very hospitable frame of mind. Please. Oh, sorry. You don't choose to stand up when the German officer passes? See, we're English. Your passports. Oh, beg your pardon. You're quite right. The English should not stand up. They should go down on their fat bellies and crawl. Oh, look here. So you are standing up. Very well. We shall generously permit you to run back to England. No doubt to find yourself safe jobs. Meanwhile, you may sit down. Fat bellies. Safe jobs. As if they weren't all taken by now, anyway. Colligate, this is absolutely and finally the last straw. Yes, Charters. We warn Dicky Randall at once, come what may. I'm with you, old man. It's things like that to bring it home to you. Sandwiches, biscuits. Yes, sir. Will you take tea substitute or coffee substitute? Tea for me, please. Tea. Right. He's in there. That Gestapo fellow's there, too. There's a couple of stormtroopers in there. How the devil are we going to pass him with the word without that fellow spotting him? We've got to do it somehow. Yes. Of course, he, he might come out for a minute. I mean, most people do. We must act, Charters. It's no good hanging about on the off chance. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. That uh, steward. What about him? Well, he's bound to come back sometime to bring that order. By Jove, yes. Please. What, uh, what time do we get to Munich? In about 30 minutes, sir. Thank you. All right? Yes, I put it underneath the donut. Good. What? Well, how do you know that for him? Well, I suddenly remembered that Dickie Randall always had donuts sent up to his room for afternoon tea. <laughs> Very clever of you, old man. Oh, better it's get enough. along there, eh? Mm. Right. Oh, my lord. Well, what's up? Well, I'm, I'm wondering if it was donuts. I, I believe it was rock cakes. Have you made all arrangements to transport at Munich, Martin? Every arrangement, sir. Will there be more than one car? Almost certainly two. Let's see, that will make seven rather a car. I think in order to finish my talk with Herr Bomesch, you had better take the second car. Very good, sir. I believe Herr Bomesch is really beginning to see that I am doing my best to help him. I'm sure he knows, sir. Yes, yes, Major. Your attitude has been most reasonable. You must remember it's only a few hours since father was taken out of England by force. Captain Marston was only obeying orders. Members of the Gestapo are frequently asked to perform duties which others find too objectionable. Some are objectionable. Others I find extremely satisfying. I often envy you your opportunities. I am escorting the party. My dear Martin, it's my privilege. In fact, it is an order. Terrible. The way prices have gone up already.
Excuse me. Yes, I, I, I'm Randall. How are you, old man? You remember me? Yes. This is Charters, an old friend of mine. How do you do? Well, what is it? Look here. We don't know what you're up to, of course. Never mind about that. But whatever it is, you appear to be on the spot. Tell him about it, Charters. Well, I was phoning Berlin about my golf clubs. By the way, I'm resigned to the fact I shall never see them again, probably. Yes, we'll get on with it. Well, I was just coming to that. I was telephoning. I got on the other chap's line, you know, that Gestapo fellow. I overheard him saying they were sending a military escort to arrest you when you get to Munich. You see, you're rumbled. They know you're, you're not Herzog. I can't tell you everything, there isn't time, but that I've got to get that old man and the girl out of this country at all costs. Well, an official job. Are you two fellows came to help me? What, against Germany? I'll say we are, after all they've done for us. What do you say, colleagues? Absolutely, old man. Backs to the wall. Mm, I hope not. See, give me a little more room to think. I think so, Ulrich. There's no time for tea. You'll reach Munich in a few minutes. Oh, time for just one cup. Cake, darling? No, thank you. I'm afraid I must ask you to drop this little comedy. It is very entertaining, but I have certain formalities to attend to. Comedy? What do you mean? Oh, thank you. You are merely pretending to be infatuated with this man. There's no such person as Major Herzog. He's a British agent trying to get you and your father out of Germany. You must be crazy. Ulrich. I don't propose to waste the time of the Gestapo denying it. Thank you. You... you're going to give yourself up? Well, they have lots of proof, Mr. Bermet. An escort will be waiting in Munich to take you in charge. You can't do this. He's an enemy agent. Weren't you? Didn't you do exactly the same as he's doing? There's a slight but important difference. I wasn't caught. Are you just going to sit there and do nothing? Oh, now, please, don't make a scene. Don't you realize what this means? Yes, I do. That he has a gun and I haven't, and he's got a couple of reserves next door. Who would you take before, Bulldog Drummond? Oh, can't you be serious even now? I told you this would happen. I told you your scheme was absolutely childish, but you wouldn't listen to me. Why didn't you stay in England instead of coming over here and deliberately throwing your life away, you fool? I have no time to listen to this ridiculous display. Reimer! Reimer! Major on the train. How are we to know which one to arrest? Our man's got a Gestapo officer watching him. Who <laughs> has not these days? Thanks.
Hi, little up. Hi, little. Marsden. I'm under instruction from Fifth Army Headquarters to arrest Major Herzog. I fear you will need a stretcher. The prisoner tried to escape and I had to, uh, to deal with it. You will find him in the last compartment, Coach 66. Uh, what, uh, what transport have you? Two cars. Excellent. Now, this is Herr Axar Bomash from Haska and his daughter. They are in uh, protected custody and I have instructions to take them to General von Kahnwitz without delay. With your permission, I will use one of the cars. Certainly. I will leave you to take charge of the prisoner. Will you show me my car? Order. Take this S officer to the car. Coach 66, you said? The last compartment. Full length on the seat. Sergeant. Get a stretcher from the station master and follow me. Take the SS officer and his party in your car. One moment. It's your chauffeur to be trusted. Oh, I think so. He's a very old member of the party. Anti-Russian, perhaps. I think I better take one of my own men. I'm traveling to the place of the greatest secrecy. Very good. You will not be needed, also. Very good, sir. Rumpelmeyer, you will drive. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Come on, quick. Right, man, right. You're not in England. Oh, not much of a life, a secret agent. And your pay is bad, too, sir. I was just thinking, Charters, in the last war, the army took over Lord's cricket ground with drilling troops on. What if they'll do it this time? Short-sighted, you know. Better pull up here, Charters. You can't get to the Switzerland by any of the main roads. Let me take over, will you? Age around 22. Height 5'4", slim figure, dark brown eyes. That's a lot. Phone mm. these descriptions to all stations within a 100 mile radius. The report has just come in, sir, that the cars left the city by the south road. So they're making for Switzerland. Please take the road. Very good. One thing that's worrying me, Randall, old man, maybe silly of me, of course, but how exactly are we going to get across the Swiss frontier? I know a little place where I used to go climbing about 8,000 feet up where Switzerland and Germany meet. You're not going to ask us to hang about on ropes, I hope. I'm not, but they may. There's a narrow road leads right to the top. What's over the top? Switzerland. Anything in between? 6,000 feet drop. Well, and how can we, uh... Skip it. Skip it? Is it? Well, here we go. Don't let them get away! The road charters. Hello. Anybody here? Volker. Anybody around? Switzerland. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Are you in charge here? Yes, there's only me. I want to cross to Switzerland. Now, sir? Yes, now. But we're at war. I had orders yesterday to close the telephonic. My orders come from a higher source. 
higher than the chief of police at Maxburg? Gestapo headquarters at Munich. Oh. I've been instructed to show this alien gentleman safely out of Germany. I better ring Christopher. Yes, right away. The car coming. Looks like them. Rifles and all together. Keep an eye on them. How are the goats, Christopher? Yes, thank you, Christopher. I, I got it. Uh, and the butter. Do you want to be dismissed for incompetence? Uh, they'll be leaving in about two minutes, Christopher. I should require to see your papers. Uh, have you got your passport? How long does this take to cross the valley? About four minutes. Once it's in midair, can it be stopped? Why, yes, sir. Uh, if anyone wanted to stop it. Will you follow me to the office? This way, please. Can you see them? No, but I can hear the engine. How does this thing work? That shouldn't be difficult. Well, how? Yes, obviously, this starts it. Yes? Yes, this is the speed regulator. Speed regulator, right. Get him quick, all of you. Quick, call him. What about you? I'll start it and then jump on. They're here. Come on, jump in. They, 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 they'll stop us halfway across. Get in, will you? Fire! I'll get in over the roof! <laughs> <laughs> 